Lord Mon Unboxings. Greetings, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Lord Mon, and on today's Heroclix review, I'll be taking a look at the War of Light Scenario Pack Sinistro Corpse War. Now, note that this is not a starter set, this is a scenario pack, which means it does not come with a rulebook or hero power chart. It does come with a Hal Jordan figure, a Sinestro, uh, Sinestro figure, a Green Lantern power ring, and a Green Lantern barrier. So with that in mind, let's uh, look at the artwork and then open it up. So on the front of the box, you have Sinestro and Hal Jordan fighting. You have the Sinestro course symbol there. This side of the box isn't much to look at because it's see-through. On the back just says the contents, so and it's another picture of Sinestro. And on this side has the War of Light advertisement for the event. To open it up, you just pull out this little tag and pull out the box. And then you have a cut, and then all the figures will mysteriously appear on the table. So this is the Sinestro piece, he's the reason I bought the set. You can either get him for 250 points or 160 points. Uh, his starting dial is uh, 10 movement, uh, 12 attack, uh, 18 defense, and 4 damage. Uh, I can't really get a good camera angle of it because of the figure. There you go. And uh, this will be his, his card. So cool things about this figure, he's got a unique power called Fear Master, where Sinistro can use Perplex, but only to decrease enemy combat values. And when he does, he modifies all their combat values by minus one, or by minus two if they have two action tokens. So this guy's like a super perplexer, which makes sense given that he's the leader of the Sinistro core. On the subject of Sinestro being a very good perplexer, he's got another unique ability called I Smell Your Fear. When Sinestro attacks a character that has a combat value reduced below its printed value, he deals penetrating damage, so he can get through all those defensive abilities. He gains this ability on his damage on click three, and he keeps it until click seven. So this makes him a very good combat piece for dealing with tanky enemy characters. He's got another unique movement ability called Your Fear Betrays You. Sinestro can use Sidestep. You can give Sinestro a power action and place him adjacent to an opposing character with two action tokens. So this can be a full field teleport and it'll make your opponent be really careful about where they place some of their figures if they're far away from allies or whatnot. And Sinestro, later on in the dial, gets a lot of close combat attacks, so him teleporting next to someone is really good. So you use this power on a turn where your opponent's unlikely to be able to attack you on their turn, because this is a power action and there's no mention of a free attack afterwards. So this is the Hal Jordan figure. He costs 160 points. He's got 10 movement, uh, 11 plus the hit, 18 defense and 4 damage, with 8 range. If you can see the dial there... Um, and this is his card. <laughs> so his unique abilities, uh, he starts with an ability called Construct, which allows him to attach a Construct to himself by paying its points cost. You can give him a power action and replace the Construct up to two points higher than the original Construct. If the character has no action tokens and the new Construct is lower points value than the original co uh, Construct, this is a free action instead. He's also got a special trait called Power Ring Mastery. Hal Jordan can use Telekinesis as a free action if he has no action tokens. So this is the reason that uh, Hal Jordan works really well with this Sinestro, because Sinestro doesn't have any charge on his dial, so you can move him up with Telekinesis. His other special power comes into play around click 3 for his damage. It's called Will Limitless Reserve. Hal Jordan can use Willpower and opposing characters can't perplex to modify his combat values. When a second action token is placed on Hal Jordan, roll a d6. The result is 3 through 6. Heal Hal Jordan of 1 damage. Now this is what makes this figure be able to fight Sinestro. Obviously a lot of Sinestro's powers work off targeting, uh, perplexing people and dealing damage to them. Once he gets to his third click, uh, Hal Jordan is immune to perplex, and he keeps that power through till he gets KO'd. Next up we have the Green Lantern Ring. It's got a relic roll of 5 to 6, and its power is Will. This character already has the Green Lantern core keyword, modify all of its combat rolls except damage by plus 1, 
Otherwise, this character has the Green Lantern Core keyword, can use willpower, and when opposing characters target it with outwit or perplex, roll a d6 on a 4 to 6, ignore that effect, which means it is an anti sinistro core item, naturally, and has a point value of 8. Next up is the Green Lantern Shield construct. It's a pretty simple construct. Uh, there's the card, and if you can't read it, I'll tell you what it does. It is an 8 point construct, and this character can use Energy Shield slash Deflection, which, if you put it on Hal Jordan, uh, it gives him 20 defense against range. Uh, yeah, it's, that's a pretty darn respectable value. Now, I'll quickly just show you some of the pogs. There's actually quite a lot of them in this set, if you can see the stacks. There's ones for every Lantern Core. And there are a couple of unique ones. Uh, I'll go through the unique ones pretty briefly. But uh, yeah, there's ones for all the major players. Which, I can't help but feel that they replaced some of the potential figures in this with the Pogs. Which, uh, you know, I guess isn't so great, but they're trying to recreate an entire war in one single pack and they don't want it to be too expensive. So here are the unique Pogs. This is Rocket Man for 8. Um, Rocket Man can use Perplex only to modify the defense or damage values of vehicles. So if you're running a vehicle, this is a good way to get some cheap Perplex. There's Cowgirl for 7. Cowgirl can use Perplex but only to modify the speed or attack values of vehicles. So it's another vehicle buff. Thomas Cal... Maku, I'm pronouncing that wrong, but he costs 6, and give Thomas Kalkamu a power action to heal an adjacent vehicle one click. Now this is weird because there's no vehicles in the set, but if you're running a vehicle team, uh, these three unique pogs will work really well for you. Other thing that the set has is uh, these custom dice with the Green Lantern logo, a pretty sturdy dice. Um, they've got the logos on the sixes, so they're good luck. So this is uh, side A of the map, showing a giant Green Lantern location. Not too clear on the Green Lantern lore as far as these locations. And the other side of the map shows the giant Green Lantern and some of the... Are they Guardians or Watchers? I'm not really sure. Last but not least, there is a booklet that goes through the campaign. Uh, there's some optional rules, but uh, it features a lot of the Lantern cores, like the first one's Green Lantern and the, uh, versus Sinestro. Uh, then there are like rescue or capture Sinestro maps. Uh, there are ones with, I think, the Orange Lanterns and the Red Lanterns. But it basically goes through the story of the comics that you can recreate. So that was a pretty cool little extra. But again, I can't help but feel that they replaced the rule book with this. So if you're a new player and you don't really know, um, this might be a nasty surprise because there's no rule book. So all in all, this scenario pack is a little bit expensive, but you get a good Sinestro, my favorite Sinestro, and a pretty powerful Hal Jordan, and they work really well as a team. It also gives you a couple maps that, to my knowledge, you can't get anywhere else. So if you enjoy the Green Lantern series, pick up this pack. Uh, if you're just new to the game, this probably is not the pack for you to get started on. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.